so in the previous video exchange degeneracy topic had been discussed so now let's discuss the topic construction of symmetric and anti symmetric wave function for two and three particle systems we know that the number of ways in which the indices can be interchanged will give the number of solutions of the schrodinger equation of the system and for a two particle system let the wave function be z of 1 comma s1 semicolon 2 comma s2 there will be two factorial solutions so the number of ways we can interchange suppose if z of 1 comma 2 is a wave function we can interchange it has z of 2 comma 1 so the so uh, there are two factorial ways of interchanging this wave function so there will be two factorial solutions hence the number of uh, ways we can interchange those two particles so that many solutions will be having and here if you observe the here z of 1 comma s1 here it is taking into consideration the position of the particle as well as the spin of the particle so this is the space part and this is the spin part of the particle so both we have to take into consideration so that's the thing and similarly for n particle system there will be n factorial solutions so n part if we consider n particles they can be interchanged in n factorial ways so suppose this is wave function and here this is uh, uh 1 comma 2 there are two particles so here first part can be uh, placed with one or two number so two possible ways and uh, the next part can be placed with only one possible way that means if we take here one here only two is the possible way and if we take here two here only one is the possible way so two into one so that so we are having two factorial ways for the wave function z of 1 comma 2 that is nothing but z of 2 comma 1 so these many uh, these two solutions two factorial solutions in the same way z of uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3 and so on comma n uh so until n so uh, first box can be filled in until n n particles so first box uh, in the place of first particle you can place it in n possible ways so 1 2 3 4 5 and so on n so next box can be filled if we have taken one we have to keep it aside if we have already taken here one we have to keep it aside so here we have to go from 2 to n so there will be n minus 1 possible ways and the next way of filling this part can be filled in n minus 2 ways so and so on like that finally we here we have only one way so uh, multiplication of this all this is nothing but n factorial ways so in the case of n particle system there will be n factorial solutions because we can rearrange these particles that means exchange these particles in n factorial ways a linear combination a linear combination of these solutions will also be a solution of schrodinger equation as we have studied in the previous video so this part a linear combination will also be the solution and its proof so like that so linear combination will also be the solution in addition to this n factorial ways linear combination will also be the solution as an example we can consider two and three particle functions so in case of two particles two factorial ways so 2 into 1 is nothing but 2 in the case of three particles three factorial ways 3 into 2 is nothing but 6 so so there will be six solutions we uh, will be having the schrodinger wave equation in a two particle wave function is so the schrodinger's equation that is h uh, h i is equals to e i so h cap of z of 1 comma 2 equals e to z of 1 comma 2 so this is the case for two particle system the two degenerate solutions are z of 1 comma 2 and z of 2 comma 1 so 1 comma 2 in the place of 1 2 in the place of 2 1 so this is the only uh, two degenerate solutions and in addition to the to this their linear combination that is now the symmetric wave function will be given by psi s is also z of 1 comma 2 plus z of 2 comma 1 and the anti symmetric wave function is given by z of ea is equals to z of 1 comma 2 minus z of 2 comma 1 or uh, and where z of 1 comma 2 and z of 2 comma 1 are unnormalized wave functions 
So here we are taking symmetric wave function as xi of 1 comma 2 plus xi of 2 comma 1. So y means, so in the place of 1 if we place 2 and in the place of 2 if we place 1, what we will get is xi of 2 comma 1 plus xi of 1 comma 2. So again if we rearrange it, xi of 1 comma 2 plus xi of 2 comma 1. So again we are getting the same wave function. There is no change in its sign. So this is symmetric wave function. So if we take anti-symmetric wave function is xi of 1 comma 2 minus xi of 2 comma 1. So in the place of 1, 2 and in the place of 2, 1, if we do it 2 comma 1 minus xi of 1 comma 2. So next if we rearrange minus xi of 1 comma 2 plus xi of 2 comma 1. And here if we take minus has common xi of 1 comma 2 minus xi of 2 comma 1. So here we are getting minus of the same wave function. So after interchanging the two particles, we are getting negative sign. Uh, because of this uh, negative sign, it is called as anti-symmetric wave function and this is symmetric wave function. And here it said that uh, xi of 1, 2 and xi of 2, 1 are unnormalized. So we know that normal condition for normalization is integration of xi of xi star into dtau equals to 1. So if this condition is not satisfied then the, uh, that is nothing but a normalized wave function. Similarly in the case of three particle system there are six phase of exchanging the indices of the particle. So in case of three particles three factorial base that is 3 2s are 6. So we are having xi of 1 comma 2, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, xi of 1, 3, 1 comma 3 comma 2, xi of 2 comma 1 comma 3, xi of 3 comma 1 comma 2. So this in these many ways uh, we can have overall we can have six possible ways. So starting with 1, 2, 3, starting with 1, 3, 2, starting with 2, 3 comma 1, starting with 2, 1 comma 3, starting with 3, 2 comma 1, starting with 3, 1 comma 2. The symmetric function is, so the has here, the symmetric wave function is nothing but sum of these two wave functions. So here also the it is the same case. So here we are just adding up all these possible permutations. Uh, so there are six permutations. Possible that means six possible ways of interchanging the particles. So here we are just adding all all of them. And the anti-symmetric wave function is the can be built by adding all the functions with even number of interchanges and subtracting the sum of all those with odd number of interchanges so here we have to just add even number of interchanges and uh, uh, subtract from that we have to subtract odd number of interchanges so here say of 1 comma 2 comma 3 and 3 1 2 is there so why it's called has even number of interchange means if we see here here if you see say of 1 comma 2 comma 3 uh, first if we interchange 2 and 3 the places of 2 and 3 so 1 3 2 again if we interchange 1 and 3 we are getting 3 comma 1 comma 2 so this is nothing but even time that means two times we are interchanging here so this is even number of interchanges and here if we consider xi of 1 2 3 so one time only one time if we interchange 2 comma 2 comma 1 comma 3 so 2 comma 1 comma 3 so 1 1 is nothing but odd number so after odd number of interchange we are getting this one so all this will get has odd number of interchange and this is from even number of interchange so in case of anti-symmetric wave function for three particle we just have to add even number of interchanges wave functions of uh, with even number of interchanges and, the, and from that we have to subtract wave functions with odd number of interchanges next thing is two particles will be distinguishable from each other if the sum of the probabilities of individual wave functions in two states is equal to the probability derived by symmetrized wave function so this is the individual properties so probability is nothing but xi into psi star that is nothing but probability so that in here probability of first wave function uh, prob and uh, probability of another wave function that is two particles probabilities of individual wave function this is one uh, uh, one of the wave functions and this is another wave function so that must be equal to the probability derived from symmetrized wave function so this is symmetrized wave function if we are having if we take plus it is symmetric wave function if we take minus this is anti-symmetric wave function so overall if we do square yes uh, if we square we will get 2 into real part of xi1 comma 2 xi2 comma 1 mm. so here uh, it may be a complex form so that uh, finally if we square this term we will get this term so but here we want that 
this must be equal to this one this is possible only if this part is zero this part must be equal to this part so this part must be equal to this part left hand side must be equal to right hand side this is only possible if this part becomes zero so real part stands for real part of the this is possible if the overlapping of wave functions is zero then that means there must not be any overlapping of the wave function so if you consider this is wave function of first particle and this wave function of second particle now these two particles are distinguishable now if we consider the another case so in this case this is wave function of first particle this is wave function of second particle here what is happening this is the region of overlapping of two wave functions overlapping so here they are, they both are overlapping because of that overlapping this uh, that first particle might be anywhere in this range from here to here in the same way the second particle from, from uh, will be anywhere from here to here and its maximum availability is here but here we can't say which particle is there so in this entire region we can say second particle is re residing and this entire region uh, first particle is residing but in this region uh, whether it is first particle or second particle we could not say because there is overlapping region over here so because of this overlapping we can't say whether it is first particle or second particle and here first particle as well as second particle will be having same coordinates so in order to prevent the two particles from having the same coordinates it is only possible if there is if their overlapping term is zero that means there should not be any overlapping of the particles wave that is there should not be any overlapping of wave function of the particles so that's why it is said that uh, if the coordinates of the two particles are not the same between exchange operation then the interference term becomes zero and the particle coordinates do not, do not overlap so if this term becomes uh, this is nothing but interference term if this term becomes zero then there will not be any overlapping of the particles so this is regarding construction of symmetric and anti-symmetric wave function of two and three particles